Hey guys, what's up? It's Taylor, financial educator, streamer, and content creator, also known as Priceless Tay. In this video, we are going to be doing a updated how to get started day trading or trading or investing in general video. The last one I posted is a little bit outdated, so we're just gonna get right into it with the newest tricks, tools, improvements, what's going on in the investing world, and so much more. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Okay, so for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using my laptop, which is right here. So I'm gonna be looking down this way, going along to help you guys the best that I can possibly help you. So here we have TD Ameritrade. All you need to go is do online tdameritrade.com. On the top right here, if you're on a laptop doing this, it's gonna say open a new account. We're gonna to wanna to go through the prompts and steps of opening this new account. Example, filling in the social security number, if you're a student, if you're employed, how much money you're making yearly, so on and so forth. So next we're going to see most common and we're gonna to wanna to choose individual brokerage and we're going to open up an individual account. So again, like I said, it's gonna ask you all these personal questions. You can feel comfortable really filling these out. TD Ameritrade's great with privacy policies and yeah, I just really recommend them. So after doing all of that, we're going to want to fund our account. With funding our account, this is where that money comes in that we figured out beforehand. How much do I actually need to start trading and investing? So what even is day trading or what even is investing? So when we're investing or trading, we're taking some sort of cash that we have preferably laying around, don't know what to do with it. We already have our savings accounts doing well. We already have our retirement planning doing well. We already have our emergency funds. We, we already have the personal finance basics foundation down. We have that down, right? So with day trading and investing, we want to make sure that we have enough money left over so that we are able to then be financially secure just in case our investment does not work out as we plan to, which mostly is in profits. So when we're day trading, we're taking some cash that we have, preferably again, lying around, and then we're going to invest it into a company. And these companies can be in different sectors. These sectors can range from the tech sector to the energy sector to the retail sector, uh, to a whole diversity of sectors. And within each sector, it's typically known that more sectors are more volatile than others. For example, with the tech sector, they move faster than something like the retail sector. There's more volatility. It's, it's a higher risk. But again, with higher risk, that means higher reward. That's when we have to keep risk management in mind. Now, before getting into all of that, we first need to have that cash available. This depends all on you. I uh, get a lot of questions. How much cash should you actually start day trading with? Well, that's really up upon the individual. In this pamphlet, I'm going to link it down below. You'll be able to understand and realize how much money you actually need to start day trading to see the gains that you'd preferably like to see. For this, for some people it can range from $500, some other people can range to a few thousand. It really is where your financial goals are in investing and where you want to be with investing. So the first step, after we have all of this figured out, we've read the pamphlet, we understand um, what, how much money that we need to have before even starting, is we are going to open up a brokerage account. Now I do have a video right here. I'm going to link it right here and it's going to be about brokerage accounts, the best and worst trading apps of 2020. Preferably, I like to have a brokerage account that does have a mobile trading app so you don't have to be stuck to a computer all day long and that you can be on the go making money while you're driving, while you're getting groceries, whatever you wanna do. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing these days, except quarantine, that should be it. But that's the primary, the primary focus, first opening up a brokerage account. I preferably recommend Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade, especially if you're looking to get into this seriously long-term and not just have it in the short-term, um, quick money, easy money kind of type deal. I prefer Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade's 
platform and then Charles Schwab because obviously they're merging and they're both really good stable brokers. Whatever number that you chose there, that will eventually be hooked up to your brokerage account. If you don't choose TD Ameritrade, okay, but with TD Ameritrade, um, you can do wire transfers, ACH, and writing checks and it's just super easy process. So once you have that money funded within your account, you are going to want to go back online. Within TD Ameritrade, you're going to want to look up a Thinkorswim. And this is a platform that I like to use. Again, you can even have this platform if you want to use your other brokerage, that's fine. This, I believe, has a great analysis feature that you're able to use with technical analysis and even fundamental analysis, getting in with that news and what's going on with the actual 10K reports and all these other um, reports. So we're, it's going to say download Thinkorswim desktop and all we have to do is just install and then there we have it. If you're a Mac user, that's good. If you're a Windows user, that's good. If you're a Linux user, that's good as well. So this accepts every single platform that you know computer softwares have and they also have a mobile trading app. So once you have Thinkorswim downloaded, it's really just, you're going to want to log in. Okay, I have the Thinkorswim chart pulled up in my, I don't know if you can hear my laptop, but it's like a powerhouse right now. It's really going at it, trying to keep up with these charts. So here we have Thinkorswim, and this is my personal setup. Um, not all charts are going to start off looking like this. It's going to be black and white. It's going to have red and green. So this is my personal chart setup. You're not gonna have um, a lot of the stuff here, but if you want that chart, comment down below. So over to the left here is where we have our watch list. And watch lists are lists that we are going to watch. And this basically comes from either fundamental analysis or technical analysis, or our sentiment personally. Let's say you're a big Apple user, you're a big Facebook user, you wanna be updated on the current stock price. So this is where that watch list comes in handy. You can quickly identify the current price, the ticker symbol, and how much it's up or down in the day, the profit margin or percentage gain, 1.29% right now. We can also see some other numbers here. If I just scroll this up here, okay, so here we go. We also have volume and we have shares. So volume is the amount of shares traded within a given time period. These are on the day. Well, on the chart, it's going to be within whatever the chart style is. So for this demonstration, I am using the one year, one day. Now for this, my, my laptop is being super slow trying to record everything. So after trying to get a feel of the watch list and kind of what companies you can start off with personally that you like, maybe you want to start off in mutual funds. That is where I started off. It is a safer investment than many other moves. Um, not as high risk as some other stocks, especially ones in tech or ones in the energy sector nowadays. So here we have our chart. This is Facebook. The current ticker symbol is FB. And all we have to do to understand what the ticker symbol is, is literally just go online, search a ticker symbol, and it will give it to you. Because Thinkorswim, unfortunately, if you try typing out Facebook, it will not give you anything. It goes by specifically the ticker symbol which is like the nickname for the company. So here we have the current price. We have the percentage up or down it is on the day. We have what kind of time frame that we want to use. So currently we're using one year, one day. And what this means is that this whole entire chart is a year long. And each of these little representations, they're known as candles, that is going to represent one day. Now you can see two different variations of color. We have the white and then we have the black. The white is going to stand for a bullish representation, meaning it did well on the day. The black represents that it's bearish, meaning it did not so great on the day. And as we can see here, kind of selling off. And when we have more black candles, this is typically when we see the stock price go down. So here we can see it was at 190. It's starting to go down, 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 all the way to 174. Again, these shooting up 
green bars, at least on my screen, that is going to be the volume. Now, the volume again is the amount of shares traded within these given time periods. So if we're saying that this is one day, then that means the volume on here is also going to be the one day. And we can see on the top right that the volume on that day, particular day, was 17,650,000. 454. So that's how many shares were traded given that certain day. Over to the right, I have level two. It's the time and sales tape up top, level two kind of on the bottom right. And what this is going to tell us is it's going to tell us about market makers. And it's going to say how many people want to buy in at this rate and how many people want to sell in at this rate. And it's more really for day trading rather than long-term investing. If you're long-term investing, this shouldn't really be super effective because it happens so quickly, all the moves within level two. And the same thing with the time and sales tape. If you're long-term investing, this I wouldn't say would be very much applicable as what I believe to be. It, moreover, if you are going to look into longer-term trading, what I would recommend is really looking at fundamentals looking at the market sentiment and looking at the technical analysis. And with Thinkorswim, we are able to do all three. So here I have my drawing set. As you can see, I have two red lines already drawn. These are what's known as resistance lines. Here we have our trend line. This is one of the most frequent ones I use as well as price line, which is to the right of that. So here I can draw out a line, what's known as a support. So here we can see a support happen. This is when the stock price makes an indent and kind of bounces off and up from that floor, that support, right, that foundation. Oppositely, we have our resistance, and this is going to be more so the ceiling, going to be hard to break, um, going to usually look like a peak, as we can kind of see right here. And eventually when we come back to resistances, they can sometimes break that resistance floor and kind of make a little shooting up pattern, also what's known as a breakout in day trading terms. Here we have the news. This is extremely important when you're investing, long-term investing, swing trading, day trading, whatever investing style that you are going to be choosing, news is always extremely important as that's really what kind of runs the economic policies and even earnings, right? So for example, let's talk about the virus. So with the virus, not many people are buying and the virus is news. Technically it's news. So in turn, the company's financials will not do as well as they were when we were you know, in a great trend. Not everyone was worried. Everyone was going out. The world was a super busy place. And now you can kind of see how that news affects the market. There's also a various amount of other catalysts is what we like to call them. Things that drive the price up or the things that drive the stock price down. But I believe that market sentiment, psychology, and that uh, analysis are going to be your main forms of those catalysts. So this was just a very basic, fast, quick, simple understanding of how to get started within the stock market. I will do more videos if you guys want. Make sure to comment down below on actual more technical analysis or how do I find stocks that I like or how do I find profitable winners or how do I find shares to shore all of that if you guys want to see those kind of videos make sure to comment down below i do have a shop coming out pricelesstay.com it is super fucking awesome this shop is based off a storyline so each and every chapter there's a storyline that comes out with a new clothing drop and if you want to be a part of that story make sure to get notified in this shop also, I do have the personal finance section launching May 15th of Tap Into It. You're going to be learning how to lower your taxes. You're going to be learning how to build your budget, supercharge your savings, invest for income, and get to understand the principles of simple banking if you have not already. So make sure to also notify yourself down there. I'll link it down below. 
But we're gonna be hopping into another segment of this video. I'm gonna be doing these small segments within my videos now to help you guys kind of feel me and like we understand each other kind of thing. So I want you to comment down below the most difficult time of the coronavirus that you've kind of experienced and how you are coping with it or what you're doing to help yourself or to help your community with that. So next person who does this that I find to be the best comment or the funniest comment is going to be linked and shouted out in my next video. So I hope to see you guys soon. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Text me at my number and we'll see you next time.